you got the levels are you picking up my levels right here mic check one two three it's danielle j martin don't think of the j <laughs> here we go and three two one In. You're about to watch the newest episode to Behind the Spotlight Podcast. Now, as much as I appreciate you joining in right now, just know it's not by mistake that you're tuned in right now. Here on this day, at this moment, it was meant for you to listen to this episode. Now, go ahead and get your notepads, get your notes ready, because this individual is about to drop gems you're going to want to take note of. And of course, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Enjoy. It started with a simple message and it ignited a much needed conversation. Representation matters. Two words that I've heard consistently throughout my life and more so in the last couple of days, all because of the way I chose to wear my hair to work. Since October, my perspective has been viewed more than a million times across the state of Texas and even around the world. And let me tell you this issue it's widespread. Listen to this. From Australia to Barbados to South Africa and even back here at home, many of you sent messages describing your own experiences about hair discrimination. And a lot of us know that this has happened for far too long. It's not only time for us to talk about it, but to address the root cause of the issue. And that's exactly what we intend to do in my new series. We're calling this here, Rooted. We're going beyond the surface to discuss the unspoken need of representation and what professionalism looks like in the workplace. So join me every Thursday on Daybreak as we dig into the issue and uproot the problems. Tashara Parker, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing today? Yes, you're so welcome. If you really want to know how I'm doing, I'm tired, but that's okay. Look, I feel like uh, morning news people, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. Like you are always tired because I don't feel like your body gets used to that schedule. But thank you, Danielle, for having me on um, your show here. And I'm so excited for you. I remember meeting you at NABJ and I I passed by you. And I don't know if we stopped and talked that the first time that we met, but I know at some point we eventually talked at NABJ and we kind of connected because you're from Houston, right? Yes, yes. Yes, you're from Houston. And so anyway, we connected on that level and I'm just so excited and so proud of you and everything that you're doing. So long story short, and to summarize some of the things that I'm doing right now. So I'm a news anchor reporter in Dallas, WFAA, ABC Dallas on the morning show. I also anchor my own show 11 a.m. on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Like Danielle mentioned, my new series Rooted, WFAA Rooted to be exact. Uh, It airs every Thursday morning at 6 a.m. and it's tackling black Black hair and professionalism. This was something that started from a a viral post that went uh, viral back in October. And people were criticizing a a style, a hairstyle that I wore on the news. And basically, you know, I started receiving so many stories from women who aren't able to express themselves, who are not in the public spotlight. And I wanted to do something with that. There's no way that I can get all of this quote unquote notoriety for something that shouldn't have went viral in the first place and not be able to share other stories of women who have not been able to use their voices as it relates to black hair and professionalism and hair discrimination and things along those lines. So that's what the Rooted series is doing as of late. But yeah, no, I just, I'm I'm a community focused storyteller. That's where my heart is. So, you know, yes, daily you'll see me on WFAA morning news doing traffic reporting, but I do so much more than that. That's really just a small glimpse into my life on a daily basis because I do a lot of community storytelling because I think that's where the heartbeat of a city lies within the community. So if you're not building that foundation and getting to know the community as a journalist, you can only do so much because you don't know what the foundation of that city is and a foundation is community. So that's what I mostly love to do, tell community focused stories. Yes. So if you do not know about her, honey, you need to catch up. Okay. Cause she is out here doing it in Dallas, not even in Dallas, but all over the world. So many people have been attracted to what you're doing and it's an absolutely beautiful thing. You are breaking the glass ceiling for so many of us as black women out here, but what has drawn me to you for so long, again, like she was telling us that, um, 
we met at NABJ, but there was just something about you that has always kind of <laughs> connected me to you. And, you know, we kind of got each other's numbers. We kind of catched up off the scenes and you start talking to me about your faith. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I'm kind of drawn to people who are not just saying specifically people who are spiritual, but that is my heart. Mm. And so um, kind of first question for you, you know, you're in a worldwide view of so many people, yet you still express your beliefs, you express what you believe in. So kind of talk to me about, do you believe that you're expressing your beliefs as a journalist? Does it ever contradict with your work? No, no, God got me here. <laughs> I mean, people got to understand that without God, there's no way that I, I will be here. So I always thank God for just bringing me this far. I just remember back to certain situations that I was involved in just growing up, you know, not being able to see examples of people that were in certain roles. I was a first generation college student. There's no way that God didn't have his hand in, you know, on me, pardon me, uh, prior to going to college. I knew nothing. I knew nothing about applying. I didn't know where to start. I didn't know how to fill out the documentation. You know, it's just a matter of God was placing the right people in my life to make sure that I was able to quote unquote, become something more. All of my family believed in me. Everyone wanted me to do more, but you know, it, it's hard being able to do those things and not having a higher being leading you the entire way. So yeah, no, I, I, I never feel as if my, my, my spirituality, my religion, I don't ever feel like any of that gets in the way or clouds my judgment as it relates to journalism, because I'm still going to be able to do my job no matter what I worship. Because as a journalist, as part of what makes us so divine and what we do is that we can separate the two, right? Um, and I, you know, again, I, I just don't think that it ever gets in the way. One of the things I do every single morning is I look up on my real mirror, pardon me, and I have a scripture, Ephesians 6 and 10. And basically that scripture is saying, put on the armor of God, and I'm paraphrasing, put on the armor of God so that you can go and stand against the devil. And so I have to do that every single day. That scripture is all across my mirror. It is very important to me. And so, yeah, no, I don't think it gets in the way at all. In fact, I think it actually helps get me, gets me through my days on a daily basis because I need it. And so, so many people look up to you and kind of wonder, like, how did you go from Tyler to a big jump to Dallas? And I know that's a whole other conversation, but, you know, she came from a very medium, I would say, small market and then jumped to top, top 50, top 10, really, um, market in Dallas, Texas. It's, it's a beautiful thing that many of us look up, look up to, but something else that kind of is also on my mind is as a believer, as Christ believers, we kind of always are afraid sometimes to express ourselves, um, feeling judged, feeling like, you know, we're too scared. Someone's not going to like this. I'm too religion. What is it about, um, being a Christ believer that could possibly keep us away from wanting to express ourselves, but even though that is what we are called to do as God, as God's children. I think sometimes we, we want to be too much of the world, right? You know, instead of just shaping our lives to be pleasing to God. And, you know, I'm one of the people that, you know, I struggle with it too. It is what it is. And, and it, it actually isn't what it is. But what I'm saying is I do struggle with that. And I think a lot of Christ believers uh, struggle with that because again, we're trying to be of this world, but we're also trying to make sure that we're following, you know, God's work and doing what God wants us to do. We were never placed here to be of service to ourselves. We were always placed here to be of service to others, right? And to serve God's purpose and to find what God's purpose is in each one of us. So that's a constant walk, you know, a constant battle as well that I'm trying to figure out and trying to overcome. And so I think that's really all it boils down to is that, you know, we're so much of this world that sometimes we lose sight of who truly is ordering our footsteps. So that's the big thing. You know, we got to make sure that we continue to practice what we preach, that we're digging in more and trying to figure out what God's purpose on our lives is. I think that's when I started to really get deeper into the work that I'm doing as far as community focused storytelling was truly by understanding, okay, Tashara, this ain't, this ain't about you. So when the situation happened back in October, yes, it happened, but that was God's setup for what was going to come this yes. upcoming February, right? God was like, no, like, yeah, I wanted that to happen to you. But at the same time, like, I know that you're going to do something with that. I know you're not just going to be someone who so-called goes viral and, and, and forgets about it. And, you know, it is what it is. Like you benefit from it and nobody else does. That's not the work that I was trying to do. And so I think God knew that and God put me in a position for that to happen 
specifically so that we can go ahead and uplift other women along the way. So you got to find God's purpose on your life and allow that to lead you every single day. And once you find your purpose, I think that's how you can also find your purpose in journalism. You know, a purpose driven work will take you much further than any paycheck will any day. Yes. Yeah. You spoke on um, two things that I have to just speak out here. Two other um, anchors I spoke with yesterday, I asked them the bonus question of how, as a Christ believer, do we be, how do you live in this world without being of the world? And you just touched on that because the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so the fact that you already touched on that, it's like, okay, yes, how as Christ believers, do we continue to live? in this world, especially on the platform that you were on, you were in the spotlight. So many eyes are on you, but you have to, again, maintain yourself and kind of be balanced, be still within God. Um, Something else that you kind of touched on as well, that you are facing a lot of things, being in the, being in the spotlight, it's not easy. Um, I'm sure you have a lot of challenges behind closed doors, behind, um, things that you handle personally. So one thing that I'm trying to do um, about this podcast is making an open, safe space, transparency. And you also touched on just stepping out of faith. And it's not about me. You know, you said that when you went viral, it's not about you. It's about the people that you're speaking for, who you're representing. And that's kind of just how I feel about this. I'm kind of like, God, I don't know what I'm doing, but you told me to do it. So we're going to just step out of faith and do that. So, um, about about the challenges you face, I know that you ha- you go through something. Everyone goes through something. Yeah. But I'm sure it's not easy getting on this platform every single day, putting a smile on your face, putting on makeup, going out there, having this conversation, taking time away from work, and then going to work. So, kind of just talk to me about some of the challenges that you may face that many people may not be aware of. Well, I would say you know overall. It, it's just being able to handle the pressure of being in the spotlight all the time, right? And and I, I will say that I am one person who has been unafraid to not so-called put a smile on my face every single day. If I'm having a crappy day, you might know it. I've even had viewers email us, you know, or email me directly or send me messages to Shara, are you okay? And I will respond, no, I'm not, right? And so I am the type of person that, you know, you're not going to know about every bad day because some bad days need to just be dealt with with your therapist and and your pastor and whomever else you confide in. So every bad day, no, it's not going to be out there. But I also feel like it's important to also show when those failures happen or when you're feeling sad or when you're feeling down because no person is 100% happy all the time. And if you have a feed that you follow and it seems like that person is happy all the time, you might want to check on them because it's something that they're probably hiding. And so for me personally, you know, I struggle with sleep. I know that's a, a maybe considered a small thing to many, but if you don't get sleep, you don't do anything, right? And so my body, I struggle with, with falling asleep. Sometimes I'm sleeping two or three hours a night and that's not good for anybody. I, I don't remember the last time I had eight hours of sleep. I can't tell you. I I don't remember the last time I had seven hours of sleep. I can't tell you. And so I think that's something that I struggle with big time. And it's because of anxiety. You know, my anxiety is always on 10. I'm always worried about, did I post this? Did I update this? Did I do this? Did I do that? I've done a couple of these podcasts and Instagram lives with younger journalists as of late. And one of the questions that I've gotten asked you know, that's kind of along the lines of this conversation as well is how do you balance work work and life, right? Like, how do you have a good balance of that? And I have to be 100% honest with them because I don't have all the answers. I don't balance work and life well at all. Now, do I try to make sure that when I'm on my personal time that, you know, I'm checking on family and doing the things that I need to do? Absolutely. But at the same time, like I'm always taking work home. I'm always working when I'm not at work or on the clock, as some people like to say. And so I think that's one of the things that I struggle with a lot. You know, I don't put that out there all the time, but you know, if somebody asks me about it, I'm certainly going to be straight up about it. I'm not good with time. I'm not good with, I'm sorry, I'm good with uh, managing my time, right? As far as scheduling and all that kind of stuff, yeah. but I'm not good with having a good work, personal work, um, personal life work balance at all. Mm-hmm. And so that's one of the things that I struggle with. And my anxiety plays into that a whole lot because I'm not getting to sleep on time. I'm not getting stuff done. So that's a big deal for me. Well, I would say that you kind of hold yourself together well. I mean, no one could ever tell if you if there's something wrong, at least from the outside looking in, you hold yourself 
put together they very, can tell. very well. So <laughs> you might can't tell that yeah, but the viewers who watch uh-huh. us every day, the viewers and they pay attention to everything. Yes. They yes. can tell and they will reach out because they love some <laughs> Tashara and I love them back. And I you will tell them no. Moments. You're human. Exactly. And <laughs> I think that's one of the things that's difficult about being in a public spotlight for anybody, not just me, but I think that's what's difficult is people often get attached to one side of you. Yes. No human It's just, you know, one singular thing or singular feeling or what have you. We're very much multifaceted creatures. And I think people also may need to check themselves Mm -hmm. if they feel like they have to call you out every time you're not having Mm -hmm. the best of days. Right. Because, I mean, I have had them. It is what it is. And so I, I, I just think it's very important for all of us to, you know, when you're reaching out to somebody, when you're checking on someone, if someone doesn't seem happy, reach out to them in a genuine manner manner and really actually try to check on them because maybe they're not having that in in their normal lives. And going into the things that you balance, you you juggle so much um, going on and you say that you still don't have it together, but still there is something that I'm sure you do that maintains your mental health. And I think that's something else that um, we have to speak on on this show is that how do you maintain your mental health? What do you do? What keeps you going on your hard days? Oh, goodness. Therapy for sure. And obviously I meditate, I pray, you know, often, very often. Sometimes, you know, I just have to get my mind right before I go in to work or, you know, if I'm doing something on social media, whatever it is. And so, yes, I take mental health very seriously. I actually got my first therapist last year during the pandemic, you know, at the height of the pandemic. Well, we're still at the height of the pandemic, but don't let Texas tell you that. But anyways, um, you know, I, I I have a therapist and it's very important for me to have a therapist and to be able to talk to someone about whatever it is that I'm dealing with, whether it's something at work, whether it's something in my personal life, family, whatever it is, I do have my therapist and I see my therapist every couple of weeks. So okay. that's very important, that's important to me. Important. And, and, med- yes. and meditation is big as well. And I know some people are like, oh, I don't do that meditating stuff. Like I ain't doing a namaste and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. It ain't all about that. Like <laughs> it really just calms your mind, especially it, I know you're probably going to have some journalists that listen into this as well as, mm-hmm. you know, other folks. Yeah. But I would say that as a journalist, as someone who's always trying to get the latest information, trying to keep people up to speed. Your mind is literally speeding, right? You have thoughts and ideas just going through your mind all day, all night, you know, when you're trying to go to bed. And so when it comes to meditation, it's a big deal for me to sit down, even even if it's for 10 or 15 minutes, to just sit there and meditate and just clear your mind, right? And and to, to slow your mind down because it goes so fast, because you're so accustomed to the daily uh, grind at work that you have to do, you know, often. So yeah, meditation, therapy, prayer, all of that. And with your meditation, do you think it's important and kind of express why it's important to even meditate on even God's word? Oh, because so for me, when I listen to scriptures daily, by the way, I, I every morning after I do my, my meditation, I'll listen to a word from, you know, several pastors that I follow. I'll follow their their podcast and listen to, to something just to kind of fill my soul up while I'm getting ready for work. And so a lot of times they'll say something. I'm like, oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. And so I'm always like, uh-uh, I got to write this down because I need to listen to this. I need to go ahead and marinate on it, like you said, and really just just uh, let it marinate rather and meditate on it and just get more information about it and really describe what it means to me. Cause the pastor can give it to you one way or the reverend or whomever you're listening to, they can deliver that message to you one way, but you can also go in and interpret that, you know, a whole lot of different ways and actually apply it in, in parts of your life. That's what the messages are for, right? They're not there just for you to listen to them. Right. They're there so that you can go and apply that to your daily lives and actually make changes and actually actually have an impact on other people, a positive impact on other people. One of the things that I said I wanted to start doing is I need to make somebody smile every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about on social media. I'm talking about real life people that I talk to Mm -hmm. every single day. I want to make somebody smile. I want to make somebody feel good. And so that came from a word, a word that I actually, you know, it kept resonating with me. I'm like, oh, I like that. I like that. How can I use that and apply this to my daily life? And part of, you know, me interpreting what my pastor had stated was for me to do something for somebody else that you 
see them smile, like you see, you know, something perk up, you know, from that person's uh, face. They're, 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 they just light up. So that was very important for me. But yeah, I do think it's very important to make sure that you meditate and, and uh, take in the words and really interpret them for yourself. Talk to me about a time um, coming up into our last question. Talk to me about a time you managed so much on balancing everything. Um, I'm sure you overcame a lot of this as well. And I kind of want to touch on that, on that something maybe possibly someone is unaware of um, when some, what is something that you recently overcame a challenge, an obstacle um, that you didn't see yourself overcoming? I don't know about recently, you know, but I just think in life, you know, we all have to overcome something. And if you're not overcoming something, you know, at every step and stage of your life, then you're doing something wrong. You're standing still, you're not moving, you know, there's always going to be obstacles. For me, when I was in uh, undergrad, right, and I was getting ready to go to grad school, it was very difficult for me to make that transition from undergrad to grad school because I had no clue how this whole journalism thing worked. And that's what I mean when I say that I didn't really have any examples of what I wanted to be growing up. I didn't have mentors or anything along those lines. So the only reason that I ended up going to grad school, number one, was simply because I had no clue what I was doing. I had already applied for undergrad, so I kind of knew how that process worked. So I went to grad school to try to give me some more time to figure things out. And so, you know, getting to grad school, working two jobs while I was going to grad school was a huge deal for me. And I just look back on some of those moments where I was working literally from 2 in the morning to 1030 a.m. After that, I would get off for a few hours, get some studying done, and I would go to another job from 2 p.m. to about to about 6 p.m. After that, I would go to grad school at night. And so I think about all of those long hours, scary nights, walking to the train in Chicago, Illinois by my Myself and you know, making those days work. And I did that for years while I was trying to finish up grad school. And then ultimately, you know, after applying for jobs, several, I don't remember how long it took, but it took me a really long time to find my first gig in journalism and overcoming that, like that was, that was big for me. I did not think that I was ever going to make it into this industry. And it's crazy to think because some people, they don't struggle that way. You know, they can look for a job for two months and boom, they're in. Some people have a job when they come out of college. That wasn't the story for me. You know, I literally was struggling to try to figure out what I was doing. I didn't know what was next? You know, I got to one point where I was just like, what am I doing? Like, why am I here? I was literally walking across the bridge in Chicago and was like, why am I here? What what am I doing right now? And so, you know, I think all of that plays into just overcoming obstacles daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, every single day. And then and this pandemic situation, right? I'm pretty sure at one point in this pandemic, I was depressed. I look back now and was like, eh, you probably was a little depressed and you didn't even recognize it at the yeah. time. And so just getting to a point where I can work through this pandemic, like many of us, right, are, are dealing with and just really being able to be happy and joyful and understanding that life happens and, and we all have to keep moving. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, th I think we overcome things all the time. It's just what what are we willing to to talk about and, and discuss? Is it even that big? Because so many of us are dealing with the same things. Well, everyone, that was Tashar Parker. Now, before we go, I've been doing this with all of my guests. OK, so this is a fun little cute game that I kind of like to dissect your brain. and People kind of get to know a little bit more about you. Mm -hmm. But we're going to play just a small little game of would you rather. Um, so kind of tell me, <laughs> would you rather lose all of your technology devices or lose every picture that's even that's ever been taken of you? Technology devices. And why is that? Because we're glued <laughs> to them. I want a Zoom call with you right now. I want to go to sleep. I'm tired. <laughs> Technology. Bye. Technology. I'm over this virtual stuff. I'm just saying. But anyways, yeah. okay. Would you rather eat all of your meals holding silverware with your feet or drink all of your drinks holding the cup with your feet? Holding the cup. That's easy. Yeah, Easier. That is. Okay, so you're athletic. I know you've been working out, running, and everything. So, would you rather swim to the Atlantic Ocean or bike across the United States? Bike. I ain't swimming. <laughs> I don't do water like that. I bike. 
<laughs> All right, Tashara, that is it. And then the last thing that we are doing on every show is we are just closing out in prayer. Would you like to do the honors? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. It's a small little, you know, prayer out just for everyone to have a good day today. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, just saying thank you for allowing us another chance to just be able to fellowship and have a conversation. I'm so proud of Danielle and what you have instilled in her. She's unapologetic about praising you and giving you all the glory for all the things that you have, um, you know, called upon her life. And so I just pray that what she's doing to the folks that are listening to this podcast, to the folks that will see this podcast, that you guys know that God has something planned for you and you may not understand it at the beginning, but just, you know, listen in, lean in and try to be more open-minded and understanding. And I'm sure God will gu guide your steps as, as he has done with all of us, as he's doing with Danielle and, and this podcast and everything that we do on a daily basis. So yeah, keep blessing her, keep blessing the, the listeners who, who will listen to this and, you know, God, just, just help guide our steps in the name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. Amen. Tashara, you're always beautiful. If you do not have her on social media, please go follow her all over on social media. Oh, yeah. Tashara Parker and watch her new series Rooted. And if they can't, if they're not in Dallas, what's another way that we can kind of watch it? WFAA.com. Like okay. we said, technology is everywhere. WFAA.com. <laughs> yes, they can watch Get it live every Thursday it. morning. Exactly. Get into it. Thank you so much. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.